What's up, family? It's Ray J back with another video. And this one wants to break down what's going on with Tesla Spy, NVIDIA, the QQQ, and a couple of tickers out there. I want to talk about what's going on with AMD's earnings, what data is going to be affecting the markets for tomorrow, and what's going on with all this information that's going to be affecting Tesla. But before I break anything down with all this information, before I talk about what's going on with Tesla stock, let me just mention a couple of things. I'm firstly not a financial planner, so make sure you take none of this as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, Please check out the Weeble link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble, the link down below and deposit any amount of money into the account, you are guaranteed up to 12 free stocks. The offer ends very soon. It ends tomorrow, so check it out before they run out. This is your last chance. With that out of the way, let's get on with the video. All right, so Tesla was down at 2.38% for the day. Once again, getting this downtrend. I mentioned this in the morning that it was looking relatively weak after getting some bearish news. And as a result, Tesla continued to drop down. Our major support was around this 260 area holding Tesla up for the time being, but the question is, how on earth will Tesla move for tomorrow? And we'll break this down in just a couple of minutes. We're going to first talk about the market and some other things to come out. So for tomorrow, I'm not really seeing any major pieces of data coming out in terms of like, you know, like employment and things like that. Uh, there are some metrics coming out for like uh, crude oil and other things like that, but nothing too big. I think we, the next piece of data that's going to be coming out that's going to be big will be on Thursday. So we're kind of clear from the data for now. But in terms of earnings, we do have some big ones coming out for tomorrow. Right now, we're looking at AMD and just a couple of others like Pinterest and Starbucks. But in the morning tomorrow, we have CVS. Uh, and just a couple of others. And then after the market closes, we have PayPal, Shopify, and a few others as well. PayPal is going to be the biggest one for Wednesday after the market closes. And then for Thursday, we have Amazon and Apple and Coinbase all reporting earnings after the market closes. This is going to be absolutely massive for the markets. Now, one thing worth noting is that overall, I would say like Amazon and Apple are not really sinking that hard approaching their earnings. Uh, whatsoever they're trying to hold up very nicely and there's a good chance they may even try to pump a little bit to help the market hold up as we approach these dates it's kind of like how tesla was pumping and approaching its earnings i could see the same thing happening to amazon and apple but i don't think it's going to be as big or as volatile as that and then we're going to see a big reaction afterwards especially on friday which will either help the entire market pump or even come tanking down so make sure you're prepared for this and make sure you're ready now as far as amd goes the thing is actually up quite nicely i think it's up like over four percent right now holding up nicely after getting some good estimates for q2 the forecasts were quite good for them they did better on eps but i think their revenue is not that great overall uh, i think they're actually the revenue did do well but their eps was actually just like very very uh, uh tight now looking at the forecast they also had a slightly better than expected forecast right now and they did introduce some very optimistic news about their trips so overall quite good stuff for them surpassing many client revenue expectations that's some very good stuff for them that's going to help nvidia for tomorrow and many other stocks like that good news for them but we'll wait and see when the earnings call is finished i think it's still going on at the time of recording this i can't really record this afterwards i'm sorry about that but for now it's looking quite optimistic now moving forward i just want to mention that there was this big news that came out from the nhtsa they have another probe which is going to be investigating over 280,000 tesla vehicles in terms of uh, another of these like steering control issues and this is very very serious so if something bad is going to be announced involving the steering problems this could lead to either a large recall or some other uh you know big issue like that for tesla and this news coming out was quite bearish in the morning this is one of the biggest pieces of bearish news that came out i did mention other pieces of news during the afternoon video involving the new semi trucks and tesla trying to like incorporate more charging stations for them across california and texas but besides that, this is like the main thing making the headlines. And this is just not good news whatsoever for Tesla. Now, many individuals out there complained and they, they basically said that they, they lost uh, steering or the power steering just had a big issue. And this led to one accident possibly. And if that truly is the case, the Tesla has to really deal with this. If not, then I really hope that the best ends up happening for everyone. But if anything, news like this is not good if this does lead to a, if this does lead it to a big recall that could slow things down for the company now anyways i want to talk about something else uh in terms of their overall listings things are looking quite good for every single one of their models except for the model x most of them have relatively low amounts of listing in inventory for now but the model x is not looking that great it still has a high amount of this inventory right now and i want to see this much lower than where it actually is so we'll just watch this carefully uh, we want to see more demand for different cars we're still waiting for that to change and for now looking at the analysts jp morgan 
And also Morgan Stanley came out and they're saying that they're giving Tesla an equal weight rating. JP Morgan also did this too. I'm not sure why it's not really showing it. Morgan Stanley also did this, did this uh, very recently and UBS as well. Pretty neutral stuff overall, nothing too big. The price price ratio is also looking pretty flat for Tesla. Very, very flat. Tesla's not really like outperforming or underperforming too much. It's basically the same as before, but it's not as high as before at the same time, which shows a little bit of weakness compared to before for Tesla. So nothing too crazy so far. Looking at the seasonality basis, uh, Wednesdays tend to be decent days for Tesla. They're only green about 48% of the time, 48 to 49% of the time. So it's almost 50-50. Nothing too crazy for that. And then moving forward, the second and third uh, second and fourth and fifth hours tend to be the most volatile and the most green hours for Tesla historically. And finally, looking at the short interest, we did see this continuing to downtrend. It's not really going up to cause some kind of like squeeze or even like manipulation for Tesla. It is basically stuck the way it is. So besides that, we tend to have a high amount of co-integration with like ARC and just a couple of other tickers like these, if you are interested in just looking at them. Also, the QQQ does have a tendency of being affected by Tesla. And besides that, these are the headlines. We're not really seeing anything new for Tesla. Uh, we did see quite a few orders on Tesla, some sell orders, at least, at least yesterday, a big sell of about 2.82 million right before tesla started dipping that was just yesterday so interesting worth noting those are some trades that went on for tesla uh why did they do this could they have known about the probe maybe they did maybe they didn't who knows uh, as far as tesla goes the volume is quite decent at 82 million it's a little bit below average not really too crazy not too great either a little below average and but the slow volume that's affecting tesla and slowing it down and stopping it from being able to really run now the short volume is dropping a little bit so we're not seeing tesla being as shorted as before that's a decent improvement so far but we'll see if this ends up like showing in the share price now let's talk about the levels well as you guys know we have the 50 ema as our resistance this is still acting as resistance for tesla it's currently around this uh 267 area and then our supports at the 200 ema around 253 tesla has been going back and forth and back and forth between these levels let me talk about the bullish and bearish cases and then what's more likely starting now so the bulls are going to argue that tesla should balance from here uh, maybe they, they have a decent piece of news and maybe 260 is holding quite nicely. So they could argue that's going to retest 265, potentially even 267. And in order for us to turn bullish, we have to break above the 50 and continue to hold above it. That's going to be a bullish signal. We so far don't have that. The bears are going to argue that, wait a minute, if you look at Tesla, we have a bearish cross on the four hour time frame on the PPO. Maybe bad news is coming out tomorrow. Tesla's looking weaker. And they're going to argue that Tesla should be breaking below 260 very soon and come all the way down to about this 255 area to retest the 200 EMA. And if that breaks, it's going to sink even lower into the 240s, right? There are lots of bulls and bears out there. Those are the two cases for them. Now, what do I think is more probable to happen? Well, I just want to mention that we have a lot of big earnings coming out for like Apple and Amazon. So there's a good chance that these big tech companies may hold up for the time being. And this may actually help the market gap up tomorrow and try to hold up. With that said, there's a chance Tesla will either try to get that bounce. It's going to try to make an attempt to hold it. But I'm always going to be open-minded just to be safe because, once again, 260 is just barely holding us. So if you were to break below 260, we have this gap down here. It's going to come sinking down to the mid-250s. If we hold above it, we should see this thing bounce. I predict, this is what I think is going to happen. I think tomorrow... Uh, it's going to try to hold above 260 in the morning. It's going to actually gap up a little bit. It may retest this like 263 area around here. This is where our 5 EMA happens to be. Then it's going to make an attempt to push up in the morning, and it's going to end up slowing down intraday and just trade sideways. But we might have a very flat day for Tesla, a somewhat green day. And I think Tesla is going to try to hold up at least for now. Now, this could all change depending on how Apple and Amazon end up moving and also what the news says about Tesla. That's another factor that's worth mentioning. But for now, I think that's the most probable thing just looking at this trend because Tesla was holding up very nicely. Now, what else is possible is this thing could still be on like a downtrend because if you look at this, it's made like a higher, it's made like a, a I'm sorry, a lower high here compared to this high. And then it came down. Uh, and it's continuing to make lower highs. So there's a chance that maybe Tesla tries to balance a little bit, retests resistance, then comes down, it establishes a lower high, and it continues to downtrend. That could be like another possibility. But either way, it seems very likely based off TA, a balance is going to come, sideways price action. And could it drop a little bit later on? Yes, going into like... Uh, you know, Thursday and Friday, maybe Tesla could see some downside. But until then, I'm going to be anticipating a gap up tomorrow. 
a pop and then some sideways price action after that. It's going to get kind of boring. I think that's very likely based off this trend, and I think that's what's most likely going to happen. But now a lot of people are talking about NEO. What's going on with NEO? Unfortunately, NEO did not do what I was thinking it would do, and this was very unusual because historically, 90 plus percent of the time, when NEO reports a strong deliveries, okay, even if it's pumping beforehand, this thing just goes parabolic. 90 plus percent of the time, it runs hard after strong deliveries comes come out, basically. And when deliveries came out, we saw the best deliveries of all time for the company. They they broke their record by a long shot. Their previous record was from Jan, uh, December, sorry, December of 2022. Uh, they actually broke that record. They also did an insane amount of deliveries for the entire year, and their forecasts are still very strong. But what happened to Neil was something that was unexpected. They actually pumped and priced this in beforehand. So it was kind of like a buy the rumor, sell the news event, except I wouldn't really like paint it that way because it's not really like that in a way. This had a fundamental backing for the bullish move. It priced this in beforehand. When the news came out, it started selling off a little bit. It tried to balance at one point. We saw lots of buyers trying to step in, but it lacked volume and now it's just starting to slow down a bit. So unfortunately, I was really hoping Neil would pump a lot more after this report. It's looking like it may actually downtrend a little bit first before it bounces. Uh, but please remember, this thing did run very, very nicely, and we did get a very bullish move. Over the weekend, I did not also talk about NEO. And if you look at NEO, where this thing was going into like last week, right, this thing was at much lower levels. It was actually way down here. We saw this thing around like the 13 area. It still managed to go all the way up to almost $16. You would have caught that move just by talking and, and trading based off what I was saying. Not saying that I'm giving financial advice. I mean, just, if you just chose to make a decision uh, because of your own research and you know you figured this out based off what I was saying, right? This just gave you the education. But I'm just trying to say there was still a nice move. We caught the move quite nicely, at least a lot of it. Uh, and it did slow down, didn't really get an even bigger move thanks to earnings. I was really, not earnings, deliveries, thanks to what I was seeing. I was really hoping for that. And for now, we're just going to have to be as patient as possible with it. It is going to likely continue to downtrend a little bit, retest the 20 EMA. If this breaks, it could see a little bit more downside before it tries to bounce. But watch this as its support is very close to support around this like 4.4 area. That's going to be support for NEO. If that fails, it's going to come all the way down to the lower uh, you know, 14 area. So with that said, I just wanted to mention that it's not the end of the world for NEO. Sometimes things like this happen, but now let's talk about SPY and talk about how this is looking. So looking at SPY, I just want to mention that SPY for the time being is trying to hold up. Now, do I think SPY is going to get a pullback in the future? I think it's a possibility, but there's no confirmation of the pullback starting. Okay. There's no confirmation yet. We have to break below 452 for this thing to actually start downtrending. But before it actually does that, before we see any sort of break to the downside, in my opinion, I believe there's a good chance we're going to see this thing try to continue to hold up. And let me explain exactly why. Do not forget, we have some big tech earnings. We have Apple and Amazon all announcing earnings very soon. There's a good chance these things are going to try to hold up and we may actually see SPY bounce because of this and potentially even push up during the pre-market. So I think there's a good chance it's going to try to push up for at least 457 again, if not 458 if that breaks. Then come down and trade a little sideways and close a little bit in the green. That's what I'm predicting for tomorrow, as crazy as that may sound. I think big tech may hold the market up temporarily before we see a much bigger move by Thursday after the market closes. And I'm seeing the market potentially gapping and trying to hold up. I think the same thing can also happen to the IBM not IBM, IWM and also IBM, of course, but the IWM or the Russell 2000 can also try to balance a little bit. Uh, we have this unfilled gap up here. It may actually make an attempt to fill this gap around this 198 area over the next couple of days before this thing does start to sink a little bit later on. Looking at Apple, for example, this thing is currently around 195 a share, dropping a little bit in the pre-market. But as we approach Okay, as we approach the, you know, the pre-market areas, we could see this thing bounce quite nicely and go up to about 196, break above that, then we have like 198 or so. And if that breaks, 200 is a possibility. I think it's going to make an attempt to bounce off our 20 EMA, and then it's going to try to make its way up to 197.2 at the very least. For the triple Q, I think there's a good chance that this thing is going to try to bounce off the 20 EMA. And once it gets that bounce, we'll be watching this 385 resistance. If that breaks, it has the potential to push up to about 388, but I don't know if it's going to happen tomorrow. I would say it's just going to test 385 and maybe trade sideways from there. I think there's a good chance it's going to try to bounce a little bit and then try to trade sideways after that. Now, if the bears come in and they try to bring, bring this thing down hypothetically, you know, 380s are support and that's going to, if that breaks, 378 is a possibility. But I'm not really leaning in that direction. I think it's more likely we gap up and try to hold up. For NVIDIA, 
This thing is trying to hold up so far above our 20 EMA. It's acting as a support zone. If this thing continues to maintain this bullish trend as we have this inverse head and shoulder structure, if it holds the 20, it has the potential to try to push up to about this 470 area. If that breaks, 474 is a possibility and 478 to 480. AMD popping could help this thing out, so don't forget about that. That is a catalyst that could help NVIDIA. I'm leaning a little bit more in favor of the bulls because of this. I think it should retest 470 at the very least, if not 474. But just to be safe, if it were to break down, you have to be watching 460 as major support. Then we have 458, and then the other levels below that's just like 455, and then like 450. I think it's going to try to hold up, however. I think it's going to try to hold above the 20 EMA and eventually try to make its way up. It's about this 4 uh 70 area before it tries to break out a little bit higher now on microsoft we have a potentially bullish structure right now a nice inverse head and shoulders like structure developing and if it does break above the 50 above 340 it has the potential to push up to about 350 but for now i'm not really seeing that right i'm not seeing it breaking out just yet it needs to get confirmation first the bears want to see this thing break below 333 if that happened it's going to come down to fill this gap at 329 to 330. I think the odds favor trying to get above the 50 EMA and trying to break out above 340. I think that's more probable, but we need confirmation first just to confirm that. AMD is now up 5% in the after hours, pumping very nicely, getting very close to filling lots of these imbalances. Looks very, very strong and very, very beautiful to witness. Uh, I'm going to be eyeing this like 126 area. We have this imbalance up here. It's getting very close to it. Uh, very, very close. Very, very nice. It should try to hold up tomorrow. So far, so good for it. That could be bullish for NVIDIA as well. I'm going to uh, briefly talk about the NASDAQ and the SPX. I mean, the NASDAQ is still in an uptrend. The uptrend is not broken yet until we actually get a break below our 50 EMA. So it still has room. Basically, this 14,000 area is going to be the key support on the NASDAQ. Uh, it's still holding up above our uh, 20 EMA. So I'm going to be watching for this potential gap fill, maybe a little pop on this. Uh, tomorrow, maybe it's going to try to hold up temporarily before it sees possible downside after the earnings of like Apple. That's a possibility for it. But for now, I think it's going to hold up as we approach the big events. And I still think the market has some more room to hold up. Same thing with SPX. Uh, could there be a head and shoulders as a possibility? But there's no guarantees. You can't promise anything until we get confirmation of the breakdown. It may gap up tomorrow and try to get very close to about this like four. 45, 90 zone around there, trade sideways from there, and then we're going to see which way it goes. For the VIX, this thing's up about 2% as of right now, trying to hold up, but we're going to be watching if this thing can form this, uh, a nice balance to try to break above our 50 EMA and then eventually make its way up to 15. So far, it failed to do so, and if it rejects off the 50, it could come all the way back down to about 13.5. Uh, that's a possibility too. It's very, very flat right now, not really picking a direction, so we're not really getting anything clear on the VIX. Uh, same thing with the SQQQ, very, very flat as well. Uh, whichever direction it breaks in, it could go either way. You could argue there's a bearish case. This, is, this looks kind of distributive, uh, but no guarantees. Could this be like an inverse cup and handle forming? That's one possibility as well. Uh, that makes me a little bit more bullish for tomorrow, a little bit more bullish, but not a guarantee. For Google, if you want to be bullish, you want to see this thing break above our resistance right over here. We need to get above this like... 132 zone if it breaks above this and we're watching for it to break above that and push then fill this gap for about 133 i think the odds favor this thing trying to balance and do that but we're gonna have to wait and see with earnings as well now if the bear is stepping in this thing breaks below this 130 support it's going to come all the way down to about 128.33 what do i think is more likely well it's looking a little bit weak right now it may cool off a little bit and try to bounce uh very soon but if we could get that bounce as soon as tomorrow, then we're going to be watching this thing trying to make its way up to about 133. For now, it's looking a little weaker, however, so I'm not really counting on a very nice bounce just yet. We'll have to wait and see what happens during the pre-market for that confirmation. For Amazon, this thing, once again, uh, it's looking like it's, it's turning a little weak right now because it's getting very close to the 50. I think around 131, it could try to bounce, however, because it has a nice accumulation structure and it could be forming, once again, a cup and handle-like formation. And we're going to be watching 136. Now, why am I talking about 136, which is so much higher than where we are? It may get a pop approaching its earnings, at least try to hold up. So if it breaks above 134, I'm going to be watching 136. If it breaks below 131, it's going to come all the way down to about 130. And if that fails, then there's 128. What do I think is more likely? It may sink a little bit more and retest 130 to 131 and try to bounce off that and try to push it for 134 right before its earnings. That seems more probable based off that trend. And then looking at meta, I mean, this is really, really tight. It's forming a potential wedge right over here. 
Not sure which way it's going to break in, but if the market holds up, there's a chance it may try to break to the upside and retest 325. If that breaks, watch 330. If it breaks below, this support right over here around this like 318 area you're going to be watching it come down to about 312. what do i think is more likely i think it's going to get tight and try to break to the upside but just to be safe watch for your confirmation so with that said i went over the majority of these we also have coinbase right over here i forgot to mention this one coinbase if it wants to turn bullish i mean we still have to get this break to the upside uh, it is forming a bullish divergence right here so there's a chance to make it a balance at least a small one uh, it's coming very close to where this uh previous resistance was so like right about here coming very close to previous resistance, which is becoming support. I'm going to be looking for it to drop very close to about this 89 to 90 area and then try to bounce after that. And it may start uptrending, approaching its earnings and make a uh, move right back up to this resistance around like 95 from there, going up back up to about 100. I think it may make its way up to about 100 by Thursday. I think there's a good chance it's going to bounce soon as it's forming a nice bullish divergence. However, do not become too like much inclined to one direction. This could always change after earnings, so make sure you're prepared for that. All right, guys, so for Tesla, always look at the four-hour time frame and watch your support and resistance during moments like this. We're going to see if Tesla can break above or below one of these directions. I think it may try to gap up tomorrow. Once again, trade sideways after that. And we're gonna see what happens with the whole market. If the market gets a big rug pull after Apple's earnings on Thursday going into Friday, Tesla could sink down to retest the 200 even break below that and start sinking down to the 240s. If the market gets a big squeeze and you know Tesla gets some kind of nice catalyst as well, that could help Tesla break all the way up to about 270, then retest 274 and then 280 for the imbalance fill. Those are two possibilities. I told you all I am kind of in the middle so far. I think it could still gap up temporarily and then start, you know, downtrending afterwards. That's another possibility. Uh, but for now, I'm, I think it's going to gap up and trade sideways and not really do too much and get a very flat uh, day. And we will see if Tesla could hold 260. Now, if it somehow broke below 260, if I was wrong about the prediction and ends up doing that, then watch this gap down here. It's going to be very important. But for now, watch these levels on Tesla. I mentioned what I think is very probable, a gap up then sideways price action. And I'll see you guys tomorrow to see if that ends up playing out. All right, so thank you for listening. Tesla's at the moon. Alongside the whole market, as the long term is still incredibly bright despite the short-term fluctuations. And peace out.